This demonic ape incident in St. John Bosco's life was not a dream. In fact, it's the only time that an oratory boy was recorded to have seen the same fiendish apparition as Don Bosco. In today's video, I'll tell you some frightening cautionary tales about the sacrament of confession, and then I'll narrate Don Bosco's words on the power of holy water, which makes the devil flee in terror. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Father John Bonetti tells us, I know of a boy who had committed a secret sin and was quite sure no one knew of it. Well, one evening, as he passed by Don Bosco, the latter called him and whispered, What would happen to you if you were to die tonight? That boy spent a sleepless night, and the next morning he hastened to confession. Often during recreation, Don Bosco would call a pupil and suggest that he confess this or that sin, turn over a new leaf, and cooperate with God's mercy. His advice always proved most timely. When he sometimes couldn't contact certain pupils, he used other means to rouse them from their spiritual sloth. One was to place a little note under their pillow. Its effect was indescribable. In one case, he had for some time been quite solicitous about a pupil who stubbornly resisted such fatherly efforts on his behalf. One night, he found a note on his bed. It was in Don Bosco's own hand and bore his signature. It read, Where would you go if you should unfortunately die tonight? The boy was stunned. For a while, he stood by his bed, wrought and shaken. Finally, he ran to Don Bosco's room and knocked. It was ten o'clock. Please hear my confession, the boy gasped when Don Bosco came to the door. He was warmly received. Afterward, the boy returned to bed full of joy. The next morning, as soon as he got up, he himself told a fellow student that he had really been in need of a good confession and that Don Bosco knew all his sins down to the smallest detail. He also added that he had never slept so well as after that confession. Another time, a boy, while turning the sheet over the blankets before getting into bed, felt a slip of paper between his fingers. What's this? He asked aloud. My lucky numbers? Curious, he stepped to the middle of the dormitory under the lamp. The paper was blank, except for his own name written twice and followed by an exclamation point. The handwriting was Don Bosco's. What does it mean? He muttered, thinking hard for a few minutes. He then went back to his bed, put on his coat, and hurried to confession. With these and similar warnings, he induced them to put themselves immediately in God's grace. At a good night talk in June of 1861, Don Bosco spoke of the preciousness of the soul. There are some here, he said, who, despite the efforts already made to lead them back to the right path, don't want to be converted. I will wait a while longer, and then I shall be forced to name them publicly. One of those boys very rarely went to the sacraments. Late one Sunday afternoon, however, he went to confession to Don Bosco in the apes of the church, behind the main altar. The confessor's chair and the penitent's kneeler were in back of the altar. A little distance from them was the stand used by the cantor who intoned Sunday Vespers. Kneeling about this open confessional, a number of boys were preparing themselves, awaiting their turn. As soon as this boy knelt beside him, Don Bosco clearly saw his miserable spiritual condition. After listening to his confession, he asked, Is there anything else? No, Father. Perhaps there might be. Think hard. I have nothing else, the boy replied. Have courage, son. Tell me everything. The boy turned a deaf ear and kept silent. At that moment, Don Bosco saw a hideous ape on the choir stand opposite him. It came down among the boys, then sprang on the lad's shoulders, and clutching his throat, thrust its snout between Don Bosco's face and that of the boy. Don Bosco shuddered with fright. With tears of pity in his eyes, he again asked the lad, Have you really nothing else to confess? But under that demon's evil spell, the boy boldly answered, No, nothing else. But son, how is that possible? Don Bosco insisted. Then, tensely, he added, See what's on your back? And he shrunk back from that repulsive beast. Moved by Don Bosco's tears and words, and feeling a weight on his back, the youth turned around. 
With a muffled cry of terror, he burst into tears and holding Don Bosco by his cassock begged, please stay, don't leave me. If you want me to stay, tell me everything, Don Bosco replied. The poor fellow took courage, put his arms around Don Bosco, and while the monster disappeared, sincerely confessed everything. Don Bosco related this incident one evening to a few clerics, among them Rufino and Bonetti, who recorded it. They were deeply impressed because they remembered the dream a few months back concerning three boys with monkey-like creatures at their throats. Gradually, news of this incident spread about. When asked, Don Bosco prudently and discreetly told the entire community of this repulsive apparition. And in this case, as in similar ones, he surrounded the incident with different circumstances. The name of the boy in this incident could never be revealed. With the passing of time, the incident itself was considered by some people to be a mere tale. 44 years later, however, a proof of its authenticity came up most unexpectedly. In September 1904, Brother Edmund, a Christian brother, was in Turin attending a Catholic Youth Congress. During the sessions, he met a number of Salesians, and in the course of their conversation, the brother told them of the above-mentioned incident in great detail. Astounded, the Salesians asked him how he knew about it. He replied, I heard it at Parma from the boy himself, and he mentioned his name. For three or four years, he had been ashamed to confess a grave sin. But there's no need to be overly concerned about devilish apparitions because Don Bosco gave us a powerful way to combat them, the frequent use of holy water. In a good night talk in 1865, he said, there is in St. Peter's a really beautiful holy water stoop whose bowl is supported by a marble ensemble symbolizing temptation. A long-tailed and horned frightening devil is pursuing a boy. The youngster, seeing himself about to fall prey to that ugly beast, reaches in panic into the holy water font. Dismayed, the devil no longer dares to seize him. Holy water, my dear boys, is good for chasing away temptations. Don't we say about a fast runner, he runs like the devil from holy water. When tempted, and especially when entering a church, make the sign of the cross well, because it is there that the devil is waiting for you to make you lose the fruit of prayer. The simple sign of the cross repels him momentarily, but when joined to holy water, it keeps him away for a long time. One day, St. Teresa was tempted. At every assault, she made the sign of the cross, but within a few minutes, she would feel tempted again. Annoyed by this, she sprinkled holy water on herself, and the devil had to beat a hasty retreat. If you'd like to hear about Don Bosco's escape from a demon through the use of holy water, just click on the video above me here. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.